What's going on guys, Aegis here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the M1 MacBook Air after seven months and some of my experiences that I've been having with this device. Spoiler alert, it's mostly good. I have a few bad experiences, but overall, good device. And I'm gonna be talking about why I recommend it for a majority of people. Now, before I get into the full seven months later review, I'm gonna kindly ask you guys to look for the subscribe button and smash it for me. I do a lot of content on iPads and MacBooks, so if you're into that, Make sure you subscribe below and also more importantly if you're into apple products i do a lot of apple product giveaways a couple times a month but this time i'm going to be doing a bit bigger of a giveaway should i say bigger or is it smaller i don't know but i'm giving away a home pod mini but once i hit a thousand subscribers i'll be giving away a home pod mini and to enter the giveaway all you have to do is be a subscriber and comment down below that you subscribe to enter the giveaway or you can even comment on what you think about the video let's get into to the video. So the M1 MacBook Air is definitely one of the best devices that I've purchased in the last couple of years, specifically from Apple, because basically it can do it all. There are a few gripes that I've had with it after using it for seven months. So I thought that I'd start off with the bad, although it's a really short list, why not give it to you first? The first issue that I've been having after seven months of using this thing pretty much day to day is the display. Now, the quality of this display is amazing. I'm gonna be talking about that later. However, I've been having some display issues whereas if I'm plugging in my 4K LG monitor in the back, sometimes I see static, sometimes the display turns off and on. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a problem between the display, the adapter that I'm using, or the MacBook itself. However, I'm able to easily plug in the iPad Pro to the same display without issue. So I don't know what it is. It is very annoying because I do like using the external display as opposed to the display on my MacBook. This has been one of the major annoyances in my experience with the MacBook. If you've had this experience, drop a comment below on how you fixed it or is this something that's just exclusive to me? I don't know. Now my other complaint has to do with the design. I love the design and again I'm going to be talking about what I like about it in a bit but something that I really wish Apple did with the MacBook Air is to spread out the USB-C ports. They put both at the same side. Who at Apple thought that that was a good idea? I mean it makes no sense. Functionally it just makes the most sense to separate them because it gives me more flexibility if I want to plug in things on the right side versus the left. But now I have them both on the left and sometimes you got to stretch the core over uh, on the other side and it's just it's just a headache. So I'm not asking for more USB-C ports but if you were to put two please Apple just, just spread them out. Pretty much other than that those are my only gripes with the MacBook Air after seven months. Now let's get into some of the things that I like about it. Sticking on topic with the design, the MacBook Air has always been my favorite form factor out of all of Apple's Mac computers. I like the minimal design, tapered edges, and overall premium feel of the design. It has a metal design, and I gotta say that this is probably one of the best designed laptops out there if you're comparing it with anything, including Windows computers. I like the form factor of it. In comparison with the MacBook Pro, this thing is sleek, easy to put in your bag and go, and I like that it's just a bit smaller than the MacBook Pro. I like that on the M1 MacBook Air, they decided to not add the touch bar because it's not necessary, and I feel like they're probably gonna go away with it on the MacBook Pro anyway. So let's talk about the power. As I mentioned, the designs of the MacBook Air are really the exact same as the MacBook Airs of the past. So what's changed, you might be asking, and the answer is the power. This thing has the M1 chip, and of course, I'm not gonna go into full detail. This is a seven months later review. You guys have been thrown M1 this, M1, M1 that. that every single day since Apple has announced it. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail about it. I can just talk about my experience after seven months. And to be completely honest, this thing has been able to handle every single task that I've thrown at it. Editing high quality raw photos in Lightroom, editing 4K videos, and also anything basic like watching movies, web browsing, checking emails, having multiple browser tabs open. It works so well, I don't see any lag. But there was one time, one time that I did experience some lag and that was because the M1 chip uses virtual RAM as well. I have the 8 gig version and I was editing a big project in Final Cut because I started to run out of memory. They start to use the virtual memory on the M1 chip. It starts to slow down because there's no more memory available. So 
I do recommend if you're going to be editing locally, then you might want to get a 16 gig RAM version. Other than that though, it does not lag, it don't have a problem. Uh, some people might be wondering about if this thing overheats. Of course there's no fan that cools the M1 chip because the M1 chip doesn't really need cooling. It works well. Not one time has my computer overheated or felt even remotely hot. In comparison with the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air definitely has similar specs, almost the exact same specs, depending on which model you get, and it doesn't need a fan, but yet you need a fan on the MacBook Pro, which barely kicks on. All that to say, the M1 chip is super powerful and it's gonna to continue to be powerful. You don't have to worry about slowdowns, and it's gonna ensure that your MacBook Air, if you're buying it, will last for five, six, seven years in the future. Let's move on to the battery life. Now, Apple claims that you get 18 hours of battery Battery life and I'm sad to report that I don't get 18 hours of battery life but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I could get 18 hours of battery life and if that's confusing let me explain I use my MacBook Air mostly 80% of the time to edit 4k videos so if I plug it out and I'm not using it docked as I normally do and I'm editing 4k videos I only get about eight hours of, of power on it but I'm not necessarily just use this to browse web read emails only I usually use it for editing videos so if I'm only doing that I most likely can get that 18 hours of battery life however it's not been my experience seven months later so other than that, there's not much to talk about. This is the best laptop for just about anyone and I'd recommend it for anyone that needs a computer, period. And this is over the MacBook Pro, the iMac, the Mac Mini. I'd recommend getting the MacBook Air. I feel like it's the best bang for your buck because it represents the best of both worlds. You got the most power and you got the most portability in one computer. If you're looking at it and pairing it with an iPad, I don't know if the iPad Pro is the best computing device for the most amount of people because you're gonna need to buy the iPad Pro, then buy the Apple Pencil, then buy a keyboard case, and then it's gonna finally feel like the computer that you're looking for, but you can just straight up get a MacBook Air and you have everything you need for a lot cheaper than the iPad Pro and its accessories. But this is overall the best computer that you can buy. There are some minor, minor details that I hope Apple fixes in the next iteration, including moving around those USB-C ports, maybe adding an extra one, and that will pretty much be it. I'd recommend it. It has my stamp of approval. No complaints here after seven months. So how's your experience been with getting the MacBook Air? Are you looking into it now and deciding between this and the pro let me know in the comments below what you guys think and also don't forget to win a free home pod mini all you got to do is subscribe comment that you subscribed or comment your thoughts on the video thank you guys so much for watching i'm gonna see you guys in the next one peace